Hi everyone and welcome back to another Genshin Tips video. I have previous parts of this video so if you want to go watch the first part it will be linked in the corner but continuing on with the Genshin Tips series, here we go, part 3. Again, some of you might already know some of these tips and some of them may be pretty obvious, but for those of you who are a little new to Genshin or don't know a lot, this video is for you. But without further ado, let's get started and here are some of my helpful tips. The first one is if you're walking around and you realize that there is a world quest or if you see one of these exclamation marks on an NPC, the tip is to mark them down so that you remember where it is. If you don't use the interactive map or if you don't know where the quest locations are, then marking it down with some sort of marker at least is important to do so that you can come back to it later. If you don't have time to start the quest right away or if you have a bunch of quests in your quest menu, then that is fine, you don't have to do the quest, but at least try to mark it down so you can come back to it when you have a little bit more time. This is really helpful for time management, or if you're just really busy that week and you don't have any time to play Genshin other than commissions, so coming back to the quest later on is really good. The next tip is if you are running low on Mora, or if you need just a little bit of Mora, then go ahead and check your quest menu in the backpack. So under this category right here, these are all quest items that you got during world quests or if you have archon quests, like you can see I have a bunch of other stuff. But if you scroll down, you might have one of these, which are like a huge bag of Mora or gifted bag of Mora. And some of these are provided by character story quests, like this one's from Child, but I know there's a bunch of other quests where you're given an allowance and then the rest that you don't spend, you can turn into the bank and get extra Mora. So what you want to do is talk to the receptionist at the bank and then make an exchange and select how much you want to exchange. It's not a lot of Mora, but if you're running low on Mora and you really need some, then try checking your inventory because you might have some spare Mora lying around. Like if you don't have resin and you don't want to farm, then you can exchange it right away. But I always keep this emergency allowance. I don't know if I'll ever need it. I have so much Mora, I don't think I'll need it. But if you are running low, don't forget to check the backpack and check the menu and go to the bank and find out if you have any Mora to make the exchange. Okay, so if you're like me, you might have forgotten Dragonspine existed for a while, and that's okay because I did too. I remember that I still had to complete everything on this frostbearing tree, and the thing is, the reason why I didn't want to complete it was because I started collecting all these crimson agates very early on and didn't mark them as found on the map, so I have a bunch of random ones lying around, and it just takes so much time to go and check every single one of them. It will take me a really long time. If you don't know, once you reach the offering level 8 you will have this thing called crimson wish what crimson wish allows you to do is if you go to the map you'll find a bunch of these little icons spread around and what you do is you go to these locations and then complete the challenge or complete the mini quest that's found at that area and then you'll be gifted with one of these crimson agates and the thing is you don't need to mark them as found and they're not in a chest so you don't have to like go out and look for them it's really really easy to go and do these like if you have extra time then you might want to some of them are located on mountains which are kind of annoying to get to it's really helpful if you just don't want to find them all around the map i wish you could do this for like Geoculus or Animoculus, but you can only do it for this kind. And keep in mind that the Frostbearing Tree does give pretty good rewards, so if you have the extra time, then you might want to collect the first eight levels of the Frostbearing Tree, and then it's easy going from there. But again, it just is so time consuming that you might not have time for it. These refresh often, so once you finish all five, they'll refresh again, and it's just a really easy way to collect a bunch of these. So you might be going through your artifact inventory, now maybe yours is not as full as mine or it's already at its max. When I'm looking through my artifact inventory, I have a bunch of artifacts, but the problem is that none of them are really the artifacts that we want. And that's a pretty relatable problem because artifact farming, the odds are not exactly in our favor and it can be so annoying to go out and try to find the perfect artifact for our character. Like you want to get those crit rolls and you also want to get the right stats and it is just so time consuming especially with having to wait for resin refills. 
If you are free to play like me, you might not have as many of these fragile resins to spend or you're just waiting for resin naturally to come. And trying to find the perfect artifact can be really difficult. But a tip that I highly recommend if you are an early game player or if you're just starting out farming 5 star artifacts, which is recommended at AR 45 and above so you can get the highest level domains and get all 5 star artifacts. If you're building a character and let's say that you're still farming for a specific set, let's say I'm farming the Viridescent Venera set and I don't have a perfect feather that is a 5 star then you can always find a 4 star option before you find the 5 star. A 4 star artifact with the perfect rolls are a lot better than 5 star artifacts with really bad rolls because even if it might have like a lower base attack, if it still has those rolls like crit rate, crit damage, elemental mastery, whatever you're looking for on those stats, then that is beneficial for you rather than just having a little bit more base attack. But eventually you will want to upgrade to a 5 star artifact. But if you're still trying to complete the abyss or if you need artifacts and you really really need them you just don't have time to wait for five star artifacts then raising your four star artifacts that have good rules is also better that is why when i go farm the five star artifacts i don't just check the five star artifacts and say oh defense attack blah 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 i go and check the four star artifacts as well and i lock them if they have at least crit rate and crit damage on a main stat that i want like if i find an attack sans with crit rate and crit damage that's four star I'm still going to lock it because I think it has some potential and also if you don't end up using that 4 star artifact later on, you can always use it as XP for your 5 star artifact that you might find in the future. But a 4 star perfect artifact is always better than a very bad 5 star artifact. I know that I mentioned a lot of hidden NPCs in these tips. But here is another one that you might not know yet. If you go to the Angel Share Bar, which is located right here in Mondstadt, you may have come across it during the event where we had to mix a bunch of drinks and stuff, but here it is if you don't know that already. Talk to this NPC who is working behind the bar, and he will have options where you can buy a drink. There are three different types of drinks that you could possibly buy, but if you want to get some extra attack bonus, boosting food or drink, or if you want to get some healing stuff, then come over here if you don't want to cook. This one is really good, it is increasing your crit rate, so if you want to try to get those one shots in, or if you're doing a bunch of world damage, then these are really helpful, especially if you don't have the resources to cook or if you don't want to go out and farm them. I buy some of these pretty often because sometimes I just like to collect a bunch of food and have a lot of options when I'm trying out my boss one shots. So far, it's been pretty good with Raiden, I've been using a lot of crit rate food, so if you want a new addition to your inventory in terms of drinks, then come over here to the angel share so if you find yourself broke on certain things like ascension materials or if you just need leeway specialties coming down underneath the docks there are some stores especially this one there are things like fish and star conch as well as apples and sensetias if you're needing those i don't exactly know what you need those for since they're everywhere but if you just want to spend your mora on something or if you want to get them really quickly then come down over here there are also a bunch of other hidden npcs like this one right here that has electro crystals and cheese i believe it's a really random mix but yeah this one over here sells artifacts and this one which is boo boo pharmacy has some plants and things like mist flowers or the flaming flowers and also some other stuff as well i believe there's also recipes there so you want to go check those out too but here are some top places you should go check out if you're running low on resources there's also other ones like wanman restaurant or the jade sales but those are some of the hidden ones along this area just look around liwe and walk around there's also a bookstore and there's so many things there's also some hidden in mondstadt but there's a lot more in liwe so check out those places if you need those certain and goods. Here's something that some people might not know about and it is the teapot traveling salesman that appears in your world and allows you to buy things like pets or boulders. So the teapot salesman does not come here often and doesn't stay for a very long time but when he does he's most likely to be located somewhere around your islands so you're gonna need to find him and that's why I recommend putting teleports down just in case he could appear anywhere. But the good thing about the traveling teapot salesman is that he changes all the things that he sells. So 
So some days you might sell a certain kind of cat or dog or a boulder or just anything like that. And if you don't like the one that your realm's traveling salesman is carrying, then you can go and find things from your friends. So I might want to go ask a friend online if they have the teapot traveling salesman in their teapot. And then I would just click here and click request to visit Serena Teapot. This can be really helpful if you're looking for a certain pet or if you want more boulders because you probably bought every single boulder. I have no idea. But if you just need something and it's not in your realm and you can't find it, then ask your friends because they might have the salesman in their realm and all you have to do is just go get it. Remember that the salesman only appears during certain times, so if the salesman is in your world, then it's most likely to be in your friend's world too. Just check because there'll be usually a notification here that says teapot traveling salesman is here, so go ahead and check that out. Along with when you see little alerts here that have like realm currency full or come collect your friendship XP. So that will be it for all the tips for today's video. If you enjoyed, let me know. Thank you so much for waiting for this video, and I'll be making more in the future. Good luck on your wishes, and I really hope that you get the characters that you want, and I can't wait for the upcoming update. So I'll see you all next time.